before scenes like these in the Gaza Strip stole the world's attention, Palestinians were staging nightly protests in East Jerusalem. Speaking out against the imminent eviction of several families by Jewish settlers. The context for this dispute dates back centuries. Historically, both Jews and Arabs and their ancestors inhabited Jerusalem with different majorities at different times. In 1948, the State of Israel was created on what was then British mandated Palestine. The first Arab Israeli war followed, during which some 700,000 Palestinians fled or were expelled in what's known as Al Nakba, the catastrophe. The West Bank was under Jordanian mandate, and in 1956, Jordan and the UN's refugee agency agreed to build houses for 28 displaced Palestinian families in the East Jerusalem neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. But in the 1967 six-day war, Jordan lost its mandate and Israel captured East Jerusalem. I'm full of um, anger. Rasha Buderi's parents live in one of those 28 homes. Her maternal grandparents were resettled there after they lost their home in 1948. They were um, refugees for a year in Jordan and then another year in Damascus, Syria. I went back to Jerusalem uh, and, and lived in rented homes until 1956. Her family has remained in that home ever since, but an Israeli court has now ordered them to leave by the 1st of August. They are challenging the decision. Every corner of that house, every corner of its garden, uh, brings back beautiful memories, but it's a bittersweet feeling because we knew that uh, this day might come. In 1970, Israel passed a law allowing Jews to reclaim property they owned in East Jerusalem before 1948. There is no comparable law for Palestinians. Jewish settler organizations began laying legal claim to Sheikh Jarrah, saying the land was bought by Jewish associations in the late 19th century. The Israeli courts agreed and a long-running legal battle began with the Palestinian occupants. By the 1990s, the court had recognized them as protected tenants, not as owners, but they could face eviction if they failed to pay rent to the Jewish associations. <laughs> Palestinians have accused Israel of using the law to reduce the Arab presence in Jerusalem, a claim Israel's ambassador to Australia strongly rejects. All the sensitivities, we managed to leave uh, Jerusalem open and free to all of its citizens, even if we sometimes disagree on things. The Israeli government maintains the dispute in Sheikh Jarrah is one between private parties. It's a serious issue, but it is being contended in the High Court of, of, of Israel. Uh, so this is a legal matter. Uh, I'm not uh, taking it lightly, but this is definitely not uh, a reason or cannot be used as an excuse uh, to escalate and to, th to, to start firing thousands of rockets toward Israel. The Palestinian representative to Australia arguing if Jews can reclaim property, Arabs should be allowed to as well. Five million Palestinians should have the right to return then to their own houses in Israel itself. So it's not a selective process or Israel chooses whatever she wants. But analysts say the escalation in Gaza has shifted international attention away from the issue. Hamas's in involvement in the process now makes it almost impossible for Biden to act because he can't come out in support of Hamas, which is officially in the US a terrorist organization. Had they kept out of it, I suspect he would have been quite happy to put the hard word on Netanyahu and force him to back off. Another four families who are facing immediate eviction have appealed the decision. Israel's Supreme Court delayed their hearing until June 8, amid the heightened tensions. 